Here's what happened when I finally got smart. I brought my company from what I call a donut, meaning zero in sales, <laughs> a donut <laughs> to over a million in less than two years. I created four more companies, put them through my process, sold them or took them public. I retired with more money than I could possibly spend at age 40. And um, I got bored and I decided to start a winery, which I sold um, just a little while ago. We did pretty well um, on that. And then um, I wrote a book that became a New York Times bestseller. And I was like, oh crap, you know, everyone's calling me now. So I guess I'm back in business. So, so that's how that happened. <laughs> you write a book, it does really well, you have to start a business again. So my uh, blessing and curse is that I love entrepreneurs. God, there's nothing like an entrepreneur. Here's why. You guys are the most courageous people you will ever meet. Fact. You are the most just magnificent people you will ever meet. So be good to your fellow entrepreneurs, okay? And you are the most mighty, <clears throat> mighty people you will ever meet, right? So totally take care of your entrepreneurial peeps. Okay. It's about working on your business and not in it. That's how you get leverage. That's what we're talking about tonight. If you're working in it, doing all the minutia, you got the wrong idea. Now, here's the thing I'm most proud of. Once I started getting really good at building businesses and growing businesses and doing it for others, transferring it to others, I started getting some really cool phone calls. You know, the White House called and said, hey, will you figure out our, our technology strategy? George Bush called, which wasn't really that fun of a phone call. Um, <laughs> <laughs> will you fix the Small Business Administration? And you know, I did what I could. You know, passed a bill, got $4 billion. That was okay. Um, not very fun to hang out with them, though. They do not party like the Clintons do. Those guys know how to party. <laughs> now, here's the thing. Over the past few years, the seven-figure business formula I'm going to show you tonight, as I mentioned, has built over 153 uh, multi-million dollar businesses. But here's the thing. I'm going to be on you tonight to not just write this stuff down, but to apply it. All right? Information plus implementation, my third favorite word, okay, equals transformation. Information, you're going to get a lot tonight. Plus implementation, you got to put it to work, equals transformation. All right? You've got to do those things in order to make it happen. All right. 5% of small businesses make a million bucks or more a year. 5% of small businesses make a million or more bucks a year. That's totally unacceptable. But wait, there's more. 0.08% make 5 million or more. 0.08%? That's not even like a number. It's like aspiring to be a number. Point, you know, it's not even one, it's not even close. 0.08% of small businesses get to 5 million or more. All right? Enough about me, let's talk about you. By the end of our time together, you're going to know the top three mistakes, how you guys sabotage yourselves repeatedly, and how to nail those suckers to the wall, okay? Next, we're going to talk about the burnout bug. When the burnout bug bites and it hasn't bitten you yet, it's going to. Um, I want that to never happen. I've been burned out myself, which is one of the reasons I retired. All right, and then, of course, I want to show you my favorite, 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 favorite formula for building seven-figure businesses. Anybody want any of that? I totally could not hear that. That is more like it. Okay, now, I want to share an essential distinction, an essential distinction that must be learned if you're serious about sustainable business. Sustainable business. You guys know the stats. I'm sure you've read them. When I was a venture capitalist, I have a $200 million venture fund, but it was boring, so some guys are running it for me. But um, when I was a venture capitalist, the exit for companies was six to eight years. Six to eight years, okay? God, you friggin' build it, you can't sell it for six to eight years? Oh, yeah, yeah, I get bored after like three. So, but now with our fabulous economy, which is going through some adventures, um, it's more like seven to 12 years before you can get out of your business. So you may as well not fry and burn out because you're gonna be with this baby for a while, right? And you may as well get as many points of leverage as you can so you can sell it faster. Using our formula, one of our clients, they were in business for three years, they got to two million in sales, we sold them for 58 million. So, don't believe the naysayers out there. All right, I'm gonna be checking in to see how much you care about your company, uh, because caring can be the kiss of death. Yes, we'll be shocked and amazed tonight. And um, we're gonna explore the mindset that you must adopt if you're serious about creating a company that makes tons and tons of money, but doesn't make you sacrifice yourself on the altar of success. 
I know tons and tons of rich people who are totally unhappy, right? I want rich people who are happy, right? I'm going to reveal the only way that you can guarantee in all my years of business, 28 to be exact. Um, yes, I started when I was 12. Uh, the only way I've seen to guarantee consistent, reliable growth in your business. All right, cool. One more thing. How many of you guys want to learn faster and retain more? Okay, I'm going to make you holler louder. How many of you want to learn faster and retain more? Yes. All right. I know it's late. I know we've had cocktails. It doesn't matter. There's this thing called accelerated learning. Accelerated learning requires me to ask you questions and you to respond with enthusiasm. Okay? And I swear to God, it's cosmic, but it cements the learning better. Otherwise, you guys are going to, you know, it's going to go in one chakra, out the other, you know, and you're going to forget all the good stuff you went over tonight. And why should I be here if you're going to forget it, right? Okay. We're going to count down um, from uh, no, mistake number three to one. Okay? All right, cool. Great. Stay alert right to, thank you! <laughs> Great! Stay alert right to the end. All right, let's begin with the third biggest mistake that blocks entrepreneurs from building their seven-figure businesses. That mistake is... Karen. Karen! Karen! Karen. Thank you. Yes, it's caring. How can caring keep you overworked underpaid, trapped in your business, feeling poopy, having a bad attitude. Okay? I'm using my psychic powers. I bet you guys build a business because you care. <laughs> you care about your products, you care about your services, you care about your team, you care about your clients, you care about your prospects, you care, right? You care about the people that you do business with. You care about the quality of your product. You care about re your reputation. If you didn't care about any of those things, you shouldn't be in business, right? Now, you spend long hours at the business, you spend long hours slaving away, and you guys work more than 10 hours a day? Yeah, yeah you do. You're not raising your hand, you're not your head, okay? <laughs> Returning every customer email, talking to everybody on the phone, dealing with every aspect of your Twitter and your Facebook and your, you know, et cetera. Um, and here's the thing, you're blogging, et cetera. You, you know, the problem is client care, marketing, sales, it's endless. There's no end, ever, trust me, okay? You have your fingers in all these things because there's that saying, the only way to ensure something gets done is to do it yourself. Yeah. Right, okay, caring is admirable, but 99.9% .9 of business owners have control issues. <laughs> caring. <laughs> Caring becomes control. Care less. Oh, I can't believe she said that. I'm going to show you how in a sec. Here's the thing. Caring becomes control. If you're still the manager of your business, you know, you may as well just go back to the daily grind and get a J-O-B. Seriously, okay? You don't want to be doing that. Here's the thing. You can never really control the outcomes of anything. You can't, okay? Um, it's totally an illusion. Why not start to take a good hard look at your business and figure out what you can take off your plate and give to somebody else? There are most valuable activities. You know what yours are. Probably sales and marketing. <laughs> Product development. Most valuable activities, least valuable activities. 